Hello friends, this is a final little bonus episode uh, just to go at the end of the Xeno Clash series because I realised that while I've been playing this game and recording it for two, three weeks now, uh, this entire time I forgot to mention this game has a challenge mode. It's an arena based combat mode and I've never played it. So I thought I might as well have one final little bonus episode just to show off that mode. So what I'm going to do is I am going to set myself a time limit of 15 minutes and I'm going to see how far I can get. If I get my ass kicked, uh, I get my ass kicked and it's just over. And if I make it all the way, well, we'll see how far I can get within, you know, one episode. We'll see just how good at punches I am. Uh, a couple of other things to mention. One is that I'm about to have, like, dental, dental work done, so there may be a delay of episodes. I like to have a buffer of episodes, but there's been so much upheaval in my life that the a buffer doesn't really exist anymore. So there might be a gap of a few days, uh, but if there isn't, then either the next episode will be the final episode of the Mirror's Edge Let's Play, or the next episode will be the first episode of the Transistor Let's Play. And I'll just steam on ahead from there, but uh, yeah, that might not be till next week. This is irrelevant if you're watching this in the future. Do people in the future watch these? I have no idea. So let's go. So I, as I said, have not played the challenge mode. Um, it looks like there are five challenges up the tower and three challenges down the tower. So I assume that you pick one of these to start and then you see how far you can get. And if you want, you can start at a higher level. I assume that if you start on level one, then within that save or within that session, you just keep on going as far as you you know can or want. Um, yeah, so it's time to go to the Tower of Fight, I guess. I'm going to start on Tower Challenge 1 and see how high up I can get. So, uh, there's no in-game explanation for what this place is, why you're here or why you're fighting. It's very much that kind of classic bonus challenge mode that's not exactly, uh part of the narrative or anything like that. So, um, what I should probably do is ramble about the fight mechanics, as if I haven't done plenty of that already, and ramble about the character design. There's just something so hateable about Onpa, I'm really not sure what it is, but something about him just makes me want to kick his ass. This is, um, probably just a real coup of, uh, character design really since um if you're gonna have to kick the shit out of people over and over and over and over again they should probably be people who you hate maybe that's why uh Remat only shows up a handful of times throughout the narrative okay oh fuck ass okay so i guess it has some of the um animal threats as well Oh, you can just melee these to them. Why were they so uh, insistent that you needed a gun to fight them? That's the real question. I feel like Onpa and um, Gastornis are two of the most basic designs. There's not a great deal of detail to them. They're just, it's a guy who looks vaguely piggish and a guy who is a bird. Now, I'm going to assume that that's not the completion of level one because there were five tiers to that tower and if they're all that easy, there's no way it's a challenge mode. Huh, that took a lot longer to explode than I expected. I never, I never fought wrath birds during the game uh, by hand, but it's remarkably easy. Is that it? I guess so. It's fun how you can hear that they've remixed sound effects occasionally as well. This ladder dropping down is... Uh, it has the sound effect for the um, the cocking of the crossbow included as part of the sound. So presumably, their sound designer uh, just remixed those sound effects together. Is he coming down, or is he just is he happy up there? Aha! This is what this is for then, I assume. Oh, I missed. I can come back to him later. So since this is a challenge mode and I do want to see how far I can get, I'm probably going to be a bit less fair fighting than I usually do. I tend to try and actually fight people hand to hand rather than relying on the weapons. 
but uh, when people are shooting crossbows and things, I've decided to let that little uh, bit of honor slide. So, also, if they're going to keep throwing bombs, then okay. This guy gargles at you aggressively. I don't like it very much. He's a lot more menacing than the other Corvid, who are just kind of a bunch of extremely strange guys. I also find this guy very menacing, even though he's he's not much of a threat throughout the game. I think you only get to fight him two or three times, but um, something about that horrible face of his with the big lolling tongue just makes him seem like more of a threat than he actually is. Whereas this guy kind of just looks like he wants to party. I would chill with this guy. Okay, so I do actually need to wipe that guy out. Shouldn't be difficult since they have kindly given us a grenade launcher. Which, um, as we all know, is the most expedient method for solving any problem you might have with another person. Oh, fuck. Or indeed yourself, if you're bad at aiming. Can I keep this? Can I take this up to the next floor? Uh -oh. Full disclosure, I just to make sure that it would work and everything, I did actually play a little bit of this mode earlier, but I went down into the minus levels rather than up into these plus levels. As far as I can tell, they are actually separate. Uh, if you start on level 1, you start inside this tower and work your way up. If you start on level minus 1, you start at the top of a big hole in the ground. It's actually really interesting the way that... Um, adds a mechanic that has never previously been present in this game. Because what it includes... Do they both have grenade launchers? That seems extremely unfair. So what it includes is the um, is the addition of vertical platforming. This is a game that doesn't have a jump button but they decided to include platforming. Ow! It'd be amazing if this was the end. Right here. Three grenade launchers? Three grenade launchers, okay. That's entirely too many grenade launchers. Well, I didn't last too long. Uh, so, given as we're only five minutes in, I'm actually going to try the other tower challenge as well and see how far I get in that one. I was not expecting... Um, three grenade launchers that quickly. That does seem a little bit... a little bit unfair. I feel like if you start on level minus one you get a little bit more of a, of a, of a story to this mode because here you are in a desert in the middle of nowhere. A tower stretching off to the sky, Babelish almost. Or Babelish. You might recognize this caravan from the desert level of the game, so perhaps we're in the same desert, but this definitely isn't the same place. As you approach the pit, you can already hear your opponents screaming at you. Gastonis' vocalizations are so delightful. Just an extremely angry parrot. Like, did you ever have a pet parakeet, or have you ever seen those 10,000 videos of people's pet, uh, pet parrots? It's, uh, it's, a, it's a real sight to behold. So there's no falling damage, which means that um, if you just knock someone down there, then you'll probably have to fight them while you also fight whoever else you fight. So it's actually better off as you drop down to uh, kind of take these different panels as you go. Also, don't stand too close to the edge because the guys on lower levels can definitely throw rocks up at you. Where they're getting rocks, I do not know, considering we're standing on iron panels jutting out from the walls. As I mentioned, this is a platforming section in a game which doesn't have a jump key. It doesn't have any mobility abilities at all. So I believe I mentioned quite early on in the series that um, the designers, as they designed your opponents, wanted the designs to physically reflect what they're like to fight. They wanted to do this by uh, well, the way they chose to do this is by designing the characters first and then deciding what their fighting style and particular abilities and personalities should be based on what they look like. 
I never noticed this before. He's wearing he's wearing stilts. Oh wow, we stand a short king, huh? You should just own it, my my dude. So yeah, based on his appearance, you would assume him to have quite high damage resistance, but I'm beginning to suspect none of these fighters actually have differing stats at all. I think that they're actually all the same. <laughs> Now, what I remember from playing this earlier is that there's no actual point where... Uh, I'm going to have to make a hole, aren't I? Sorry, Anpa. There's no actual point where you get a lot of healing. Um, I think towards the end of each section you start to find some healing items, but they are few and far between. Which really means I need to be careful not to group up my opponents. I should uh, try and wipe them all out on their particular... What do you call these? Tears? Well, at least my dinners are sorted. This is a nice opportunity to get a closer look at the models as well. Wrathbirds and their weird, gross dinosaur faces. Please don't be offended if you like dinosaur faces. I just think they are odd on birds. I'm not sure how many melee hits it takes to take out a Wrathbird, or indeed if Wrathbirds have melee attacks of their own. As always, I get a lot of use out of the sprinting elbow ability. Now see, on this floor it broke for me, which is nice and convenient. So, uh, gee, I wonder who I'm going to be fighting down here. Oh, would you look at that? It's a heavy enemy. I'm sorry, bro. I can't remember what your name is, but I'm pretty sure you're Gat's brother? Sibling of some kind? I love how much detail they are on all of the enemies. You can see he's actually got an array of tools on his belt, and you can see what they all individually are. Let's just have another look. Okay, now that I can see properly, he's got a key and another key on one side. He's got a knife and some cooking implements on the other side. I wonder if he was maybe the uh, person responsible for cooking in the family. Who knows? There's a little motif that shows up a lot throughout this game, which is of these faces. There's a lot of different faces and you see them in different places. But on completely unrelated characters. So... It kind of evokes a particular feel, which I think I talked about ages ago, which is of a certain very specific kind of children's uh, children's storybook illustration I remember from when I was a child. With these big, weird, chunky, gloopy... Oh man, this is just sad. I mean, I'm going to get back to what I'm talking about in a second, but buddy, come on. I know I talk about how much I hate Onpa, but this guy sucks so bad. It's so interesting to me because it's almost as if he's been intentionally designed to do the opposite of appeal to me. It's a good thing that skull bombs don't touch off. That would be a problem, probably. So I guess there's a, to some extent a little bit of a puzzle, so with regards to making sure that you... <laughs> make holes in places where you can actually drop down instead of uh, you know, making a hole and falling down it way to the bottom because as I said there may there isn't full damage for these guys I think there's full damage for you you shouldn't use bombs it's very unsporting let's not say anything about the fact that I am wielding I've always called this thing the sword but it's a club with a cross guard for some reason not sure what the benefit of that is. There's the iconic source engine clang sound effect as well occasionally when I drop off these edges. My favourite thing about Se Sung is that he almost looks like he's from a different game. He looks like a he looks like he could be, you know, a goblin foot soldier from a different fantasy game. Everyone else in this game is so weird and specific and unique, but he just looks like 
you know, more of a more of a guy, more of an actual guy. Even the mechanic's head is so large and chunky. I'm not sure why he's called the mechanic. We've never seen him do anything mechanical. And he's got this big weird metal collar on his neck. All right, who's next? Who's next is the lovely rat ladies. These are one of my favorite designs. Um, I, assume, I assume they're sisters. I think they're members of the, uh, the Northern Gate Gang. But one of them might be on a father of this brood, I'm not sure. One of the kind of amusing things about this particular design, I think that they both use the same model, they have slightly different detailing, is that as is possibly appropriate to a rat person, they have four breasts each. As is possibly hilarious, if uh, you think that kind of thing is funny, they, I think, have jiggle physics. They have jizzle, jiggle physics on all four of their rat boobs. <laughs> Which, you know, if it's something you can decide to have, then it's an absolute power move. Why are my sisters just so much cooler than me? Says Gat. Um, I was going to say disappointed, but actually I think we all know Gat drinks respecting the ninjas. Um, Even as I do ricochet them off one another's heads. Also, you've got to respect your eyeshadow game. All right, let's fight like siblings. I say as I just absolutely roundhouse kick her into oblivion. So continuing on looking at all of these different character designs. Uh, normally Remat's hat is a different separate entity. If you hit Remat, her hat normally flies off and is then a physics object that can be kicked around the battlefield. So it's fun to see that in this instance, I guess it's just attached to her head. I wonder if that means they used a different uh, a different model or a different like physics thing. I don't know from engines, so I can't say like mesh or whatever, I don't know. But I love that she has this weird like knee-high combat boot on one side and a stiletto on the other. It's an interesting asymmetry and asymmetry is always beneficial to designs, but it's uh, it is peculiar. And um, I think that I've already said everything there is to say about her design, which is that she looks like she wants to be a Saiyan from Dragon Ball Z. But again, you see there's so much detail in all of these little models, and you don't even notice a lot of it normally because you're just fighting forever. So, let's go down and finish fighting Chitlana, which was not difficult, I guess. Honestly, I would wear this. This is... This is actually a look that I would wear in real life. Uh, that isn't, because you look like you live in a cave and eat snakes. So, I guess this is the end. Did I finish a challenge? Or, what's happening? Okay. <laughs> so that's what happens. Okay, okay. So what I had concluded was that it would just send you on through each of the challenges, uh, but it actually sends you back here. So it looks like it took me 10 minutes and 40 seconds to beat Chat Tower Challenge level minus one. And um, I think that that's where I'm going to call it because, uh, well, for one thing, my lungs hurt. And for another, this is just a happy but happy time bonus episode, I guess. So that's what the challenge mode is like. These are my first hand impressions, having played it for like 30 seconds previously. And uh, yeah, that is going to be all from me for today. Actually, one other thing I want to mention is that um, if you like my work, please, you know, like, subscribe, whatever. But the most important thing is to actually share it. Um, this may seem super obvious, but uh, I have a tiny audience and it feels nice whenever my tiny audience grows a little bit. So thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.